All right, so welcome to the intermediate course. I'm sure you're eager to get started, so instead of making an introductory section or even an introductory lecture, I thought I would just quickly cover everything you need to know about the course here, and then we can jump right into it. So first, the entire course uses Unreal Engine 5.2. And new versions are released often, so by the time you're watching this, chances are that there is a newer version available. The differences between versions, when it comes to the material covered in the course at least, probably won't change that much from version to version, so if you want to use the latest version with the course, most things will probably still be the same. However, since I can't foresee what the changes will be, the only way to guarantee that the software matches perfectly with what you see in the course is for you to download and use version 5.2, which I highly recommend. Okay, and the second thing you need to know about the course is the course content. This can be downloaded from the homepage of the course. After downloading and unzipping the file, there will be the folder Course Content, which will contain a couple WAV files, and the folders Animation Lectures, Slides, and Textures. The Slides folder will contain all of the slides used in the course, saved in the Microsoft PowerPoint format. The Animation Lectures folder and the audio files will be used in Section 3. The Textures folder will be used throughout this section, beginning in the next lecture. All right, so now that that's out of the way, let's start learning about materials. So at this point in your education, you should have a basic idea of what a material is, an asset you can add to certain types of actors to make that actor look like it's made of, or at least covered with a certain type of substance. But how are materials constructed? And how do you create new ones? These are the questions we are going to answer in detail in this section. But first, in this lecture, we're just going to do a quick overview of the material system in Unreal before digging deeper into the subject in the subsequent lectures. And if you'd like to follow along at home, to get to this point, I created a new blank game project that includes the starter content. And then I created a new basic level, which I then saved in the content folder under the name new map. All right, so to get started, let's first take a quick look at a material that has already been built so we can see how it was constructed. In the content browser, you can double click on a material asset to open it in the material editor. For example, in the materials folder of the starter content, I'm going to double click on this mBasic wall material. So now we're in the material editor and we can see how this material was constructed. Materials use a node-based graph, similar to blueprints. Every material will contain this material inputs node, which has a variety of inputs, with each one representing a physical characteristic of the material. And then the material is constructed by connecting values to these inputs. So this is a rather simple material that simply provides a value for the color of the material and a value that specifies how rough the material should appear. To add nodes to the graph, you can right-click in the graph to bring up a node menu, just like in the Blueprint Editor, or you can drag and drop nodes from the palette window on the right. In the upper left is a viewport window, where you can preview what the material will look like. By using the row of buttons in the bottom right, you can select the shape of the mesh that the material preview will be applied to. By default, it is a sphere, but you can also change it to a cylinder, plane, cube, or you can use the last button to select a specific mesh. So I'm going to go to the content browser, browse to the props folder, and then select the chair. And now if I click on this button with the chair selected, it will use the chair as the preview mesh. Okay, so you can also click inside the viewport and drag the mouse to adjust the camera, like you can in the viewport of the level editor, except the controls are a bit different. If you left click and drag, it will rotate the camera around the preview mesh like so. If you right click and drag or scroll the middle mouse button, it will zoom the camera. If you click the middle mouse button and drag, it will pan the camera. And finally, just like the viewport of the level editor, this viewport also has a row of buttons at the top where you can set the viewport options, change the perspective, set the view mode, and toggle some show flags. And then in the bottom left of the material editor is the details panel. 
If you click in an empty part of the graph or select the Material Inputs node, you can use the Details panel to set the properties of the material itself. If you select any other node, you can set the properties of that specific node. Okay, so now I'm going to close this material and I'm going to show you how to create and build a new one. Specifically, I'm going to attempt to make a gold material. So first, I'm going to go to the content folder in the content browser so that it gets created there. And now to create a new material from within the content browser, you first need to open the add new menu by either clicking the add button or by right clicking in the folder. And then you simply click on material. You can then give the material a name. So I'm going to name this my gold material and then double click on it to open it in the material editor. And so you'll start off with just the material inputs node. So to start defining our new material, we need to feed values into this node. Most of these inputs are designed to take float values between zero and one. So for example, the roughness input is used to define how rough the material appears. A value of zero will make the material completely smooth, while a value of one will make the material as rough as possible. A value of 0.5 will produce an amount of roughness exactly between these two extremes, and so on. The metallic input is used to define how metallic or metal-like the material appears. A value of zero will make the material completely non-metallic, while a value of one will make the material completely metallic. And then the base color input actually takes three float values between zero and one. One value to specify how much red is in the color, another to specify how much green, and the third to specify how much blue. So to feed values into the material inputs node, we need to use one or more material expression or material function nodes. And I'll explain the difference between the two a little later, but for now, to access these nodes, you can either right click in the graph and select them from the node menu, or you can expand the palette on the right side of the screen and drag and drop them from there. So perhaps the easiest way to feed a value into a material input is to use a constant node, which will output one or more float values. The constant node will output a single float value, the constant two vector node will output two float values, and so on. And note that these constant vector nodes are often referred to as vector two nodes, vector three nodes, and so on for short, and that's mainly how I'll be referring to them. To the right of the names of these nodes, you will see their shortcut keys. If you scroll through this list, you will see some of the other nodes have these shortcut keys as well. If you hold down a shortcut key and then left click in the graph, it will create that node. So for example, I want to create a vector three node so I can specify a value for the base color input. So I'm going to hold down the three key on my keyboard and then left click in the graph and it will create that node for me. And then if I double click on the node, it will open up the color picker, which I can use to define my color and it will automatically assign the correct float values for me. So I'm going to turn up the value property so that it's not completely black. And now as I select different colors, you can see the three float values for red, green, and blue adjusting accordingly. So I'm going to set this to a yellowish color and then click OK. And now if I connect the output of this node to the base color input, it will feed that color into my material. And now it will update the preview of the material in the viewport. Okay, so now I want to set a value for the metallic input. So I'm going to hold down the one key this time and click in the graph to create a constant node. I want my material to be a metal, so I'm going to go over to the details panel and set the value of the constant node to one. And then I'm going to connect the output to the metallic pen. So now my material will appear to be metal, but this is a little rougher than I would like. I want a completely smooth metallic surface, so I'm going to hold down the one key again and click in the graph to create another constant node. But this time, I'm going to leave its value set to zero. And I'm going to connect this node to the roughness node. So now, with the roughness set to zero, the material will be completely smooth. And now I have a material that kind of looks like gold. 
So if I'm happy with how this looks, all I have to do is save this and this material will be ready for me to use. So I'm going to go back to the level editor and then go to the props folder in the starter content. And I'm going to drag a table into the level. And now if I go back to the content folder and drag the material I just created onto the table, I will now have a golden table. All right, so that will conclude the lecture on the overview of materials.